Welcome to Ratons to Podcast Evolved, your favorite Halo podcast. I'm your host today, David, and with me is Orin. Hey, everyone. Krista. Hello. And our very first, possibly, yeah, I think our very first returning guest, Kelly Gay. Hey, guys. Woo! Yay! <laughs> um, well done, Kelly. You're now up there with our highest returning um, guests. So if you're listening to this, you probably know who Kelly is already, but I'll give you a quick rundown just in case. And Kelly is the author of the short story Into the, Into the Fire in Halo Fractures, the novella Halo Smoke and Shadow, the novel Halo Renegades, and another novel Halo Point of Light. Um, so Kelly, straight away, I'll Quite say congratulations. Risk. Yeah, well done you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you have a lovely, and I said it before in the last podcast, and I listened back to it today um, just to make get, get everything right in my head. You started off quite nicely. You get a short story, a novella, a novel, and then now you're just knocking them out. Yeah. Who knew it would work out like that? That wasn't well, planned. We... For... <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of the last show, we said, Kelly, we'd love to see Halo Renegades 2. And that's pretty much exactly what you did. So at the end of this show, you kind of know what's coming. Um, <laughs> our, our request. Halo Renegades 3. Yeah. Halo Renegades 3. Halo Renegades exactly. 3. Our lips are sealed. Uh, um, and re- remember, uh, to the audience, spoilers for all of these yes. novels. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we will be mostly talking about Point of Light, but obviously, um, spoilers for everything. Uh, who knows where we'll go. Um, very quickly, um, I will point out, um, thank you to our patrons, uh, for your support up to now. You guys have been fantastic, and we could not have done this without you. So thank you all very, very much. Um, if you're interested in being a patron, go check out patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. You get all sorts of stuff over there, early episodes, our own soundtrack is pretty great. Um, there's loads of stuff over there. Go go check your stuff out. Um, so I'll just jump straight in. Kelly, how have you been since last we spoke? It's It's been a while. The world has changed and it's it's not the same as it was before. <laughs> That's true. Um, doing pretty good now. Um, just working and getting, uh, kind of feel like we're finally on the back end of all this COVID stuff. And it does, yeah. Yeah, so, um, the past year is, is just strange. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm <laughs> sure everybody feels the same way. Yeah. I might be presumptuous in saying that being an author might have been that you're probably in the safe category of, of work yeah. to do. You. You're okay. You kind of kept yourself busy, I imagine. Did it help or worsen? Was it more difficult to focus on writing, or what was it been like in 2020 being a, an author? Um, well, for me, nothing really changed on my day-to-day activity. Well, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time trying to find like hand sanitizer and toilet paper and all that stuff. Um, oh yeah, that was different. Um, but no, the work stuff really didn't change, and we have always um, communicated, you know, through calls and things like that, and, and email with the people I work with. And the writing was different in that, you know, with COVID for a while there, especially in the beginning, um, like I don't know, February, March, and those months, we kind of really didn't know what was happening or how bad things were going to get, and uh, it was. Um, it was like kind of hard on the creativity sometimes. It would just fizzle out because I would be up here worried yeah. about husband, worried about my daughter, my sister. They're all in the medical field, and I remember one time like my husband had to give his last N95 mask to my daughter, and then worried about him because he didn't have one. And and you're up here trying to you know work in another world, and another galaxy, and like <laughs> you kind of think about us being worried about them. So that part was. It took some getting used to, you know, and I don't know, it's just it's a weird, weird time, but I, I'm glad, you know, a lot of that part is over. Fingers crossed, I, I hope. <laughs> Were you pretty in, in the uh, the writing of, of Point of Light during 2020? About when did you finish uh, the writing? Well, I was like, in those early months that I was just talking about, I was writing the rough draft so oh wow yeah it was it was all through that that i was i was actually writing the book and writing um, the point of light your covid book yeah it basically is it's definitely my covid book. 
for sure. But, but it's nice to say you'd never know from the book. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess I wrote, I started, I think I started around January, right in the rough draft, and, and then went straight through, and I can't remember when I finished. It's like, you know, books, they, they take so long to come out and, you know, go through the production process that by the time they're out and people read them, it's been two years. And You've moved on to our next book. <laughs> I do remember. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and at the moment, were you writing anything else outside of Halo at that time? No. Mm-mm. No, it's all Halo. Oh, yeah. You really have to, when writing kind of big, expansive books like that, um, kind of just need all your focus on that one story. Yeah, I don't think I could have fit anything else in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, obviously, we got a very, very satisfactory book out of you, Kelly, to put it mildly. Um, I was looking through your Twitter today. The response to Halo Point of Light seems to be overwhelmingly positive. Um, so congratulations, and I, and I hope you're you're satisfied with the response and, and, and um, the fan reactions? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's always like a, a question when you start a book and how people will feel about it. And, um, you know, I try to write the story that, you know, needs to be told and that, you know, 343 wants told. And, but you always also want to write a story that fans love too and the fans want to. And so you kind of juggle everything together. And, um, I'm like so pleased that that people like it, and um, I think a lot of I think I, there was like some concern for me. Just I feel like you know I know that some fans want Ryan's story to you know go on and she finds the spirit of fire and all that stuff, which I'm not saying that won't ever happen. But in this story, you know, we had I think. Um, I want to say five or six month period in the timeline where, where they could go off and focus on helping Spark achieve his goal. And so, you know, I'm sure there were some people who were disappointed that she didn't go off and find the ship. But, you know, the time was just not right in, in those four or four to six months, whatever it was, for them to do that. So. Well, I know we oh. might jump ahead a, a bit, but like you said, you, you've left it open. This felt like the mother of all side quests, where they just go over here, <laughs> fix out, fix up Spark, come back. Ryan still has the opportunity, there's still potential to go to Spirit of Fire, and that's, and I know we had mentioned in our book club as well, we started the book, you wrapped that up pretty quickly to move on to Spark's story of like, are they going to go to see the Spirit of Fire? There there didn't seem to be the, necess- the, the need for it at the time where the book was. Um, Especially because obviously, Reen, uh, Ryan, Reen, I'm sorry about that. I'm still bloody doing it. I listen back to the podcast and I'm still missing her name up my brain. Oh, wow. um, Ryan, her motivation, their huge motivation for it is, is gone, essentially. Um, but... Well, it was gone. Kind of like the way it's set up is that, you know, Renegades ends and then Point of Light picks up. And, and in that time that we don't see, you know, they're their story's still going, we just don't see it on paper. So, I mean, they've, um, yeah. they have dogged after this ship for four or five months and just have gotten nowhere. And um, so she hasn't really given up. They just kind of, you know, at some point you've got to regroup and take a break and kind of refocus a little bit. And one of the things that Ryan wanted to do was, you know, to take that, when they do take this break is to, you know, finally go find her mom and, you know, have some closure there. And so I wouldn't say that she kind of just forgets about it or, or, well, I guess she does sideline it a little bit, but it's just like with anything in life with our goals and stuff. We have other goals that come in. We take breaks with things. We, we delete goals and, you know, <laughs> and then we help people, our loved ones with their goals. So it's, it, it's kind of like, that's the way I see it. And um, and then, of course, it doesn't mean that she's not going to pick up her quest when all this is done. So. And not, not right now. I'm not plugging it that that's what's going to happen. 
Um, hey, Lorena gets tree. Come on, Kelly. We talked about the start of the show. <laughs> I don't know. You know, and I think I think also there there are so much to juggle in the timeline too. In that, you know, if if the time is not ready for, from three four three standpoint and in my standpoint um, for us to reveal things about the spirit of fire for other reasons or you know to reveal to the world you know how the ship got to the ark um the time is just not right yet to tell um doesn't mean it's been forgotten about or it's not going to be told but so we had this you know break in the timeline to then go on and, and tell spark story and, and the librarian story and and so it it, it fit quite naturally in that and it made a you know, a nice little story. So, or a side quest, did you say? <laughs> side quest. Well, that's just, yeah, it kind of felt that way because you're like, her story was very much like, and her one of her massive driving factors was like this quest for her father and the spirit of fire. And then something else came up, and you could see her even wrestling with the decision to put that aside and focus on Spark. And that obviously led us on the wonderful story that was Hill Point of Light. Now, Oren has pointed out something that I should have mentioned right before we get moving to kind of spoil the book. That if you haven't listened to our first interview with Kelly, it's episode 187. Go listen to it. That's where you get all her background story. Oh, I meant to ask. Um, the horse obviously didn't kill you, but almost killed you last time we spoke. Did you get rid of the horse? Did you get a new horse, a nicer yeah. horse, Kelly? <laughs> I still have her. Still, still getting bruises to this day. Still getting bruises. <laughs> It's like an abusive relationship. Are you yeah. okay? Yeah. Yes, but we're both very stubborn. <laughs> Not giving up. <laughs> Fair play to you. Um, excellent. So, I have to ask the point uh, at the same time because when we were getting the announcement of your book and the release date, we also got a lovely announcement about Troy Denning's book. And... I wanted you to kind of know, from our perspective, it kind of feels like you and Troy are like the mom and dad tag team of Halo lore, and it's <laughs> it's pretty wonderful, to be honest, to be balanced between your book and Troy's book, because um, they're two of, let's say, fan favorites of the new unique characters that you guys have created, so it's kind of great. I don't know if you've talked to Troy, but I see you, you do like interact with each other on Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah, he's wonderful. I really, really like him. We we got to know each other at um, in Anaheim for Alpha's Discovery. That's right. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah he, he is such a nice, nice guy. Um, but yeah, that's funny. Uh, I like that the mom and dad. I have this like, <laughs> secret fantasy of like me and Troy writing a book together, and he does like Master Chief's point of view, and I do like Kelly or something like that. Right, in- I'm messaging Jeff right yeah, now. Yeah, do take <laughs> notes. I will message Troy. <laughs> we'll make, we'll make this happen. Hundred percent. <laughs> That would be fun, though. He's such a, a wonderful person, and he writes Master Chief so well. He does, yeah. He really does. Well, and then Vita Lopez as well. She's just wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. I'm really excited for yeah, Divine Win. I. I. I personally prefer uh, those stories. Um, I just think it's just much more interesting to see these newer characters and. And to kind of see more of the brute side of things, so so yeah, I'm really excited. Plus, it also takes place. You would prefer the other books better. I prefer. Or you I can prefer say that. No, 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 means. no. Between Troys, but to, I, I, oh, okay. I prefer the Veda storyline. Uh, yeah, you want like hard look, Kelly. I like these other books better. <laughs> I like Troy's books better. It's like, no, oh, jeez, no, no. damn, Warren. Troy has he has kind of two things going for him. He has the 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 uh, Veda. Lopez and the ferret storyline and then the the kind of earlier Master Chief as well and you know Shadows of Reach and of those two sort of storylines that he creates I I do enjoy learning and reading more about Veda Lopez and the ferrets and Castor and everybody uh I just find that more exciting to, to read about but which I I'll like probably get about into Forerunner shit so I go Well you know Kelly. what I <laughs> Yes. I, I think Kelly Kelly's saw my tweet. Crazy sci-fi stuff. I had a tweet out there after I finished this book, which this the point of light is the quickest I have read any Halo novel. And he flew like, through it. Like I, crazy. it was snowing um, uh, at work, and so I couldn't really work outside. So I just sat in my car 
and I just read so much of the book in like two days. But anyway, sidetracking from that, um, I forget where were we were going, David. Save us. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, talking about Troy, the unique characters, the fact that um, we were talking about, um, I, I had kind of mentioned that um, Troy has his own unique characters, Kelly has his own unique characters. Getting them together would be pretty great. Um, so I guess from that, you, where did the uh, sequel to Renegades come from? Essentially, where Point of Light come from? Was it like, did you always know it was a direct sequel? I know you left Renegades super open and obviously that was on purpose because you had an idea in your head. Um, did that? Did those talks, obviously Tree for Tree were aware when the book was finished that obviously it was left open for uh, another sequel. Did they begin straight away? Did they approach you a little bit later? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was fairly soon after. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably within a a month or two. I think, but wow. um, <laughs> the book is out. Yeah, so I, I could totally be wrong on that. Don't trust me at all. <laughs> um, well, I, Renegades also received quite high acclaim as well, so I I, I very very much can see that being the case. Yeah, and because it takes so long for the books to come out, they do have to kind of, if they know they want another one, um, we they kind of have talk to talk early. Yeah. Yeah, pretty quickly, so. But yeah, I, I always knew um, I had some stories in mind, you know, leaving it open like that where I wanted to go. Um, and I'm not to say a certain thing. That's <laughs> quite a right take to talk, no problem. <laughs> um, you know, I, I've always wanted to find the Spirit of Fire, as we know. Um, so, you know, that was on my mind at the time of options. And um, and then also leaving the um, the whole key story thread open was um, a big option for me. And that ultimately, because of the timeline and what I talked about before, um, ultimately that's the one we chose is to do with the, the librarian thread here. Did you did you also know early on that you kind of wanted a, a story that focused a little more uh, specifically on Spark as opposed to to Ryan in the early or did that kind of manifest as the writing process came about? Um, no, I think I think um, I think I knew I definitely wanted to tell his story. Um, you know, flesh him out a little bit more. We, we kind of went on this ride with Renegade, and so um, the momentum was there to kind of continue and and see him kind of evolve to, to who he is at the end. Um, so I kind of felt, you know, it was a perfect time to tell the story because breaking with that and maybe telling a different story and then coming back to it would have been a little bit harder. Um, you know, he was kind of, I was kind of on a roll with it and his evolution was kind of on a roll as well. And it all just kind of fit nicely into that time period. But, um, but yeah, I sure do love writing him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I imagine since the timelines were quite soon after, it must have been pretty easy to, to jump straight back in again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Um, I mean, I, I still had all that in my head. I, I knew. You know, after we had our initial talks about which direction the story was going, I I had most of the story kind of already working in my head anyway, and um, all the forerunner stuff was fresh in my mind and everything. And um, so it was a really nice progression, which is kind of really good because you know of all the stuff we talked about COVID, um, that made at least that part a lot easier. Um, like having something that familiar to work on, something you're comfortable with. Yeah, like with. I yeah. didn't have to, um, you know, do a lot of, um, take time away to do a lot of um, researching, which I still did an enormous amount for this book. But yeah, it, was, was all, was, it was all present and around me. I had it a little bit more organized than I normally do, and everything was easy to find. Um, so, I hadn't cleaned yet, basically. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I was going to ask that because I know from our previous conversation, you love doing research as a big draw for you. I was going to ask, did anything new crop up? Because I know previous we were saying you hold the world record for the amount of Halo linkages across 
Oh, everything that you managed to find. Tie-ins and book, references. Tie-ins. This yeah. book, like, yeah, took the... You took everything and ran took with the it? Trophy did, did, is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you find anything new in your research that, like, oh, it's like, I would like to include this now or never consider this aspect? Well, um... I, I'm sure I, I found, like, tons of stuff, but everything I found, like, um... I don't feel like I went particularly searching for it. It mm-hmm. kind of just came through reading of other things and, and then fit so nicely. Um, like, I love being able to um, expand on the anglers. Um, 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 the abandoned map that, uh, for Erebus 7 when they go there and, um, and to flesh out that creature more. Because um, everybody always wanted to know who, what they were in those test tubes, you know. Um, yeah, they're so scary. <laughs> yeah, like what a thing to find. Like I think I saw somebody Twitter like linked to you, and I, I didn't know that's where they came from. But I remember those tubes in the, in that multiplayer map, and having a conversation with them years ago, and then not linking it to oh, Kelly will find this and put it in her book. <laughs> so I can just wait. <laughs> well, it's also really cool. Just like like for me, like when I experienced the reading the novel, I would I would do my reading session, and then like any sort of planet or mention or something like that in in my sort of like time between time doing other things i would just go to halopedia and try to find whatever reference it came from where to see where the dots are and i have those kind of like oh like like oh moments where it's like oh wow that's that map takes place on the same map and there's the test tubes and it and it also helps me kind of visualize a little bit of of kind of the planet and the the hostility and and yeah. the, the, those types of, of moments, I think, are great to kind of, with all these different connections that you're working with, just to make the story just a little bit more alive and exciting. Yeah, exactly. And like when I was um, kind of fleshing that part out, I knew they were going to jump to certain locations, and I wanted those locations to be, you know, to be varied. So I wanted to have a planet that was um, really dangerous and primeval, and I wanted to have a cityscape. Um, because I hadn't done that yet. And I thought it'd be really cool to have this high-tech kind of city. And then just like looking through to see what I needed to create versus what already existed. And you just like start reading through things. And sometimes things just like match up perfectly and you use them. And then sometimes, you know, I have to create something. But in this case, Hilvros and um, Erebus just work really, really, really well. And I also have to credit you we're putting what has to be a predator influence sequence into the anglers where they're <laughs> they're still camouflaged in the forest thing being like over oh, here like that, that that was predator right you totally took that from predator no it's okay no, Kelly. I you tell well, me you I don't tell know. me Kelly. It's fine. in predator i don't know but um you know you kind of just put yourself into that situation in the story and thinking what like unique way you can create like this new alien terrifying yeah it was terrifying (laughs) (laughs) wow david you really didn't like it huh there was a whole claustrophobic element of it of like she's like in in this kind of like tree i don't know what was happening it was freaky there was a lot of Pretty sure well David got scared, is what it is. He had a hard time oh. continuing to read. A little bit, a little bit. Cried a little bit. But I thought they were, I thought they were awesome. Um, I thought the whole sequence was really, was really unique. Now, uh, I would like to see if uh, they'll, they'll release the, um, the concept art that, that I kind of referred to. It's really, really, really cool. Ooh, ooh. Maybe Jeff All will right. be one day on a can of father. <laughs> All right, I'm messaging Jeff again. <laughs> yeah, just, just add it to Kelly the note. Said, we'll, just, we'll just send a big email to Jeff and be like, "These are yeah, this is everything." These, these are our demands. Yeah, these are, like, no this Kelly, is where no the more podcast. Can go. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask this. Well, obviously, the writing and the timing of the book seems to coincide a lot with obviously um, the next Halo game that that's coming out. And your book obviously has a direct link to this more so than like your your previous book to, to the games where you have a location, say the Halo, which was a total surprise moment for us when we were reading the books. And um, so did say the Halo come from yourself? Was that three for three saying, hey, would you like to link it to a new game? Um, how, how did that come about? 
Um, I think that just came about in, you know, what I was talking about before of, you know, going on this role with Sparks Evolution. Um, and kind of, you know, I think he needed to make peace with his past. You know, a lot of that past was on Beta Halo. And, um, and then picking locations where, you know, that they needed to go in order to track down this key thing. Um, that was just like a big glaring obvious, you know, in my mind anyway, um, that he really needed to go there. He needed to face his past. And, um, and it also ended up, you know, when, you know, I sort of pitched that idea and we started talking about it. Then also we realized, you know, it, it fit very nicely in things to come as well for um, the game coming up. So you get to kind of see a little bit more of Zeta Halo previous to, you know, Infinite Spider-Man and things like that. Well, yeah, was, uh, was the release of the book or, or anything affected by the delay of the game by any chance? No. Mm-mm. It was it was it was still able to be pretty self contained and and all that. That's good to know. Yeah. Um yeah, I think um, I'm trying to remember time and I think it's well established now that I can't remember time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think I think we had we still had like a couple months, um well several months leeway in in time with that. So it didn't affect me at all. Well that's good at least you didn't get caught up in all that drama. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I will say while we're on the topic of um, Zeta Halo, you absolutely gave us a little sneaky flood tease with <laughs> with, with the ship and these unidentified creatures. And I was 100% getting, oh my god, the flood is here. This is <laughs> Me too. Every was single that, time that happens you do, in the book, yeah. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> was that on purpose? Were you trying to like subtly not tell us what this creature was before revealing and getting us um, all excited? Hmm. Or scared? <laughs> scared? I, I really don't know if I should say anything. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. I'll be tied to this forever. Whatever I say, I'll be tied to forever. Well, this, the, you're, you're, David, you're referring to the, the, the Tolik? The, uh, the Tolik, yes, correct. Yeah, that, that attacked the ship. That reveal of like, I was like, oh my God, these are flood. And then it was a totally new, and even that whole sequence with what they are and like how they interact i thought that was all fascinating but 100 percent, i was like oh my god the flood is here kelly's got the flood <laughs> <laughs> no i thought you were talking about that little mention that no, no, spark no. makes about um the flood and containment oh i figured they were there anyway but um yeah you don't have to touch anymore though that's okay well, yeah. Like, yeah i mean that, that is a yeah <laughs> you're a new you're your species kelly we'll just talk about them okay how were they? Where did you where did you come come up with the idea for these crystal eating memory? That whole <laughs> sequence was just so was, cool. Yeah. Um, I you know honestly I think that came about because I was sitting there thinking um, I knew I wanted the ship to crash uh, within the substructure of. Stop the crashing the ship, Kelly! I was like, oh my god, they just got the <laughs> super cool new ship. And then it totally gets trashed straight away, and I was like, God damn it. Everyone's crashing ships in Halo, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> um, and, and I'll probably crash one too. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Do it, Kelly. I, I will approve. not stop crashing ships. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it, it was kind of like how to do it in in a unique way that, that maybe hasn't been seen before. And then just kind of questioning okay what down there what could be unique i didn't want to you know kind of go with the things that we already know are down there um or assume could be down there like sentinels and things like that um and then just taking into account the fact that this ring has been kind of lost for so long and um and what things have evolved in it over these hundred thousand years and um just trying to show a, maybe something new and different that could have evolved, you know, during this time. And that could also have crashed the ship. So it just came from sitting, you know, just mulling that over in my brain for a couple of days. And, and then also, I, I just really love that location of the monument or the Crystal City, as Greg Bear calls it. 
Yeah. Um, when I read, what is that in con, uh, Primordium, right? Primordium. I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that to me was just like the most fascinating visual. And um, and I really wanted to use that and, and then tie those, you know, the crashing of the ship and then the reason it crashes there and um, kind of just tie it all together. And, you know, just from those little things, it's like, Creature grew out of that, and um, yeah, I actually had to like kind of draw it on paper, which I didn't know. Which yeah. <laughs> um, just, just kind of see if it it worked um, in my my brain, but um, yeah, hopefully you'll never see that drawing. <laughs> just send us the drawings, Kelly. Okay? okay, don't worry about Jeff. Just you, just email him on. We'll take a look. It's totally fine. Um. Oh my god. That was cool. <laughs> that was so cool. Um, and I can't see, you've touched on it a few times now, and I'll probably move this question around because it kind of suits better here. You've got way more librarian backstory in this book than I was in any way expecting. I knew you loved that character, but I didn't expect to go all the way back to like almost her childhood and learn so much more about Forerunners and how they age and grow and mature, and then to actually wrapping up what it feels like wrapping up the librarian story. And I know we, we kind of talked in our book club of like, we kind of feel this is the end of her story a little bit. It feels like it really you've gone full did. circle with this character now. You Yeah, you've done so much, so much for her. Yeah, I really feel like she's come full circle. Um, I can't really kind of say if that's the end or not. That's okay. I don't know, but um, like, I feel like there was a lot of kind of closure for her. And I really wanted to kind of, I mean, we got to see her a lot in, in the Forerunner saga, but I feel like there was still more left to tell. Um, and I I really wanted to kind of go back and, and see who she was from the very beginning and kind of tie in all that um, idea of, of the geisha and pre, predestiny and, and, and all that, because it's kind of a, you know, what happens with her is kind of a parallel to what happens with, you know, Riser and Chocolates and, and that whole group, you know, being predest- predestined to go along certain paths. And, um, you know, originally we kind of think, oh, the Forerunners are, are the ones who kind of instilled that in humanity, but, um, you know, not necessarily because the Precursors could have kind of instilled that into the Forerunners as well. So, um, but I, I just, I just, she's one of my favorite characters in, in the franchise. And you can absolutely tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just love her voice. And in, in Silentium, um, her voice was just, just had such impact um, to me, the way it was written and, and, and how she delivered things. And, um, and, and Greg kind of dropped these little, um, Kind of mysteries in there, and it, it takes some careful reading to find them. And, um, so I, I really knew that there was more to tell, and um, I, I was I feel just still so grateful to be able to um, have written more on her and figured out kind of her early history. And it's a really really good really thing. That whole linkage of her story and the kind of forgotten rate and the kind of exile and the whole almost what's hinted at like I'm not really strongly overrated at like the linkage between that rate and humanity that there could have been they have like the fifth finger they're more appearance wise appear more like humanity I loved all I ate all that stuff up Kelly I was like oh my god yes can give me some more of this when all so, the like, precursor stuff was crazy yes obviously and then like the, the return reveal. of the precursors eventually or something like them or... like Kelly just pick a story why are you giving us so much <laughs> everywhere it's like oh my god that was that was a huge reveal, and I that felt really rewarding and really rewarding. So well done, you. <laughs> and did that uh, did that come up just from the librarian story, or was that just something that you felt perfect matched in here that revealed to Ryan and that kind of that whole sequence? I like how all of this was told to Ryan, who is just, it's completely oblivious to her, right? It's just like way <laughs> over her head. It's just like, oh, these are all the things that are happening. And Ryan's like, I don't know what to do with this. But like, it, it, that part is so interesting to me because like realistically, if you, if you are human in this world 
and we know that you know forerunners have uh, manipulated humanity in this way um so what would it really be like um to have that happen and, and i didn't really um you know at the time when when we had that final scene in renegade in the, in the mountain and there's the flash of light and the librarian you know appears to spark and everything and then also to the crew um that that would then lead to all this at the time i didn't really realize that but um it, it is it is how i would envision you know, if a human was experiencing this and, and you know ryan was in the perfect 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 time and um and and also if you think about the, the way the librarian manipulated things for certain outcomes um and this was an outcome or or a fallback a fail safe for you know if um in spoilers of course but um which i guess we already all know that but yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but but spoilers, I mean, she knows that if, if her team fails to do what they were meant to do, that she's got to set other people on this path to, to make sure it happens. And so, you know, her setting all this up and, um, and appealing to Ryan it is very librarian-esque. I mean, we it saw it with Sakis, yeah. we saw it with Ryan. Um, so it's really not unique in that way. We're just seeing it from a more um, present day perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's heavy stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It, I, it, I don't get to talk Halo a lot, you I guys. <laughs> let it out, <laughs> just let it out. <laughs> oh, we love it. Blab it out. Yeah. I mean, from that holy crap moment, I suppose we'll bring into the next one. Um, Bastion. Getting oh there, getting to see it. It was teased way back, and now it's just another thing that Kelly can take and put into her book. And that whole segment was just again so so difficult to put down because there's so many questions being answered. You're not answering other questions, and I'm where and I see myself like through Ryan's eyes in this moment. I'm like, ask questions, Ryan. Ask them everything. Ask them. <laughs> and she's just totally overwhelmed. And obviously, yeah. it's Spark is totally overwhelmed, but like. That whole that was awesome. The the, uh, the 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 ship the the Eden is it Eden? I'm trying to say Eden. 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 Yeah. yeah, like visually in my brain that looks so cool. I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? Where this goes? That whole like even where I'm probably merging the next question, Chris, that you can jump in. I've just Sparks journey throughout the book and where he ends up. It's not at all what I expected. I didn't expect him to stay with the crew forever, but um, oh, I was so sad. I'm like, no. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know what my question is now, but it's just like, oh my god, <laughs> Kelly, talk to me about Bastion and um, Spark. Well, do you guys do you guys know where Eden came from? The name of the ship? Has anybody figured that one out yet? I don't I think so. No. I dropped little things in the book, but um, that's from um, the Halo Three terminal, and with the librarian telling you know her story and her end, and she tells um, she tells Born Stellar that she built a garden. Um, oh. She, oh shit. Yeah, she <laughs> said, uh, she said, did I tell you, um, I built a garden and Earth is so rich? And she goes on to say that, um, that it's Eden. And so that's where the name came from. Fascinating. Look at you, <laughs> Kelly. Wow. But you'd, you'd almost mistake Bastion for being the garden because I love the idea that you've built like this man made, almost perfect over representation of Earth. Of like, it's just that's her kind of gift to kind of preserve this planet almost and give it to spread it fits so nicely in its back and his reaction to that of like these are like this location is my home but it isn't at the same time i found all his internalizing of what was happening to him so overwhelming and just so i just wanted more time there do you know what i mean and just yes. I, wanted to, I wanted to know more what was going on with these characters the other um ais are not not whether they kind of like I'm blanking on the name, the, the builder. The Giasses? Yeah, yes. And the fact that you had, uh, obviously there's concurrent events going on that's impacting what's happening on Bastion with like the rising of the Guardians, the reopening of the domain. Um, what's the name of that character now? The one that comes and meets Bastion. They were, they were all waiting for him to come. Tools? 
Is it? Yes. Yes. And I was like, oh, wow. Who's this? Tell me more about him. No, he's going away. Where are we going? <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I just wanted more time with all these characters, with all these things that you introduced near the, near the end of the book. It was, it was a hell of a ride, Kelly. I'll tell you I that. also don't think we got a definitive, like, and you don't have to answer this question, but I don't think we actually got a definitive purpose of what Bastion's goal is or yeah. what it's supposed to be doing. I'm sure that'll be answered eventually, but it was just like, oh no, why? <laughs> Come back. Yeah. I wish I had more time, too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're constrained by book length and you have to turn in a certain, um, you know, page count, word count kind of thing. But, um, yeah, there's so much potential there. And it does have a purpose. <gasps> Hello, Renegade's tree. I can't wait. This is going to be so <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it is like this repository of all her experiments. And, um, and, and just that idea alone is, is vast, you know. There's a lot there. Yeah, there's definitely loads there. I can, I could see you pulling from her, having stories told just just there. Yeah. Um, that was so cool. Oh god. Um, Krista, do you want to ask anything specific about Spark's journey? Because I put this segment in here <laughs> just for you. <laughs> oh, he is so he's so sad through this book. I'm just yeah. like, oh man, it's just so sad. Oh, um, I think he, he ends up in a good place though, right? He does. He does, I think so. Oh my gosh, when you had him show Chalkus at the very end of the book to Ryan, I'm like, I can't do this. Oh yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful that little gem came because I, I was struggling, honestly struggling through that scene because I really, I didn't want to just make it, you know, okay, so long, goodbye, and um, I, I really don't know where that came from, but I'm so glad it came. I thought it was so beautiful. I'm just like, oh, I'm so sad, but it was just such a sentimental thing because Guilty Spark still is kind of, you know, he's he's a little wacky and a little weird and his emotions are all over the place and he's still trying to figure himself out. So his connection to Ryan and everything really brought out a different side of him that was just a treat to see in all of the books you had him in. It was just yeah, such I loved an him as on the crew. Him as a crew member interacting with humans was always satisfying. He has like one of the best character arcs of any of the Halo characters. 100%. It's just so yeah. in depth and crazy, and there's so much there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank yeah. you. Oh my gosh, and I, loved, I love it. And I loved his little kind of father son moments with little bit. I was like, oh this my so great. god. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. so fantastic. Yeah. I like how Little Bit has kind of adopted a little bit of Guilty Spark sass with Ryan at the very oh, end. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to get you sleepy tea so that you go to bed. <laughs> 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 I was so glad that that we could we brought him back because I hated having to to kind of essentially kill him off a little bit in, in Renegade. Yeah. And I feel like he was just kind of emerging as this really cool um, characters. I hated to, to kind of like see him go, um, but super glad we, we brought him back to this. Yeah, so I, I think you know him and Ryan are going to have a really fun future together. I, yeah, I am so excited to see what's next for Ryan. Oh, no, it's going to be so it does, fun. It's just one thing I kind of relieved that okay, if Spark has to leave, at least he's left something behind with with uh, Ryan, which I true a little bit. So that it kind of gives you a bit like I feel like that ship needs needs a character like that there and obviously okay this kind of ties us nicely into some of the other stuff um, that even that Oren picked up the books has a lot of themes obviously about family and the book opens up straight away in a place that I didn't think it would go or even consider wanting to go uh, but Ryan meeting her mother and the whole um, concept of having a stepbrother of like yeah we can see what you're doing here Kelly she's coming back for the stepbrother there's no way that's not <laughs> happening um, Halo Renegades 3. So <laughs> that was great. I loved what made you decide to open the Family drama. There. I'm like, ooh, yeah. this is starting out spicy. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, what made me decide to do that there? Um, that was the only place I could put that. Yeah. Um, you know, ideally, I, I like to start a book a little bit um, quicker with more action, but um, that 
in the timeline, you know, I, I tried to kind of move the timeline around and, and fit it where she could have gone, but really, once that the whole thing takes off and they start hunting the key, there there's no uh, place in the book where she could right. stop on that ride and and go back um, to see her mom. So it had to be at the beginning, and and I really wanted her to continue with the closure that she had um, in Renegade, you know, finding out her dad's dead, and then you know, kind of not like shoving it down, but. You know, still typical Ryan avoiding family, and they went searching for the spirit of fire for a while. Um, and then that break that they have, um, right before, right as the book starts, is is because she can't avoid it anymore. Um, and that's really where the book had to start. Um, yeah, yeah, the whole sequence was great. And is it Case that the? I hear it as Casey. I've heard Casey, people okay. it Case, but I didn't really intend it to be. <laughs> I guess it's kind of spelled like that, but I call him Casey. That's perfect. You're you're the you're the canon. You so uh, you whatever you say goes, <laughs> Kelly. That's perfect. Um, so Casey, I love. He walks in on the two of them, and it's just yeah. so cool. The breeze, you just no like, Yeah. Oh, hey. And then he's like, "Oh crap, you're her." He's like, "Talk to you later." Gets up and walks out. No bother to him. Thought it was cool. Yeah, the fan part, you really wanted to make him, like, a secret John Forge half sibling, but, you know, because I love John Forge. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it just, that would have been too on the nose, and and time-wise, it couldn't happen to me, but, but, yeah, so he's the half-brother, and and I think she, you know, through her journey of this book, and uh, she goes on a wild, wild ride. And, you know, I think it's necessary for her growth too because, you know, we get to an end and she's thinking of all these things and family and, and you know, is this the life she wants? And it, it kind of, she kind of needed to go through that and because now we get to the end where the guardians are released from the galaxy and all this turmoil. And then you kind of like, kind of a bad thing to do to a character like you, you get them to realize that they want family and then you kind of take it away from them <laughs> at the end with um you know with putting the galaxy in turmoil like that bit but it sets her up for you know some future things if, if there ever is a future ryan story um so everything has a reason <laughs> yeah and the uh rest of the characters I know you, you thought they all had more story to them this time around and it definitely felt like like a family maturing um, like kids moving out looking at colleges uh, you had the older characters looking at retiring in a bar you had a whole sense of this the family the crew changing all throughout the book all looking at their own characters their own kind of stories yeah well that I really want I really want when I write here as much humanity in it as I can because just because it's a future um, setting and we have all this fantastic science fiction it's still, it's still very much led by humanity and, and we don't lose all those things you know we don't we don't lose all our worries about our kids and or you know wanting to set out in the world and make a difference and stuff and, um, so that's always really important to me but, to have those elements in there um, and, and to give everybody everybody a different paths and and also to give them opportunities to change their mind and decide to go in different ways because um, that's very much how we are as people um, but yeah and then also <laughs> also you know it's very much true to life that when we have these goals and we have these paths and we finally decide we know what we want to have it all go to shit and <laughs> <laughs> you know? that's pretty much why you leave us off yeah right. <laughs> and, and, and that's how it is and i know it's kind of a weird ending um maybe for some people and people want that that everything tidied up and then wrapped up nicely but it's just that's just not true to life at that time and I always want to be like, or present things in a very truthful way. 
and with the Guardians rising and, and I mean if you think about the state of the galaxy like you know, Cortana has sent them them all out to different places and now they're going to p- patrol everything and um, you know we have all this devastation from the rising we have um, assumed devastation from them you know with, with populations that don't want to accept their control and um, so there's a lot of um, bad stuff happening with you and, and not everybody's going to get to you know meet up when they want to meet up and or, or they're doing the things they need to do but I think it's a nice personally it's a nice way to kind of set up for any future stories because it is so up in the air that then you have the opportunity to go in different directions yeah. that was well, really long winded <laughs> no uh, just to kind of build off that what what is nice is that now that we we have insight to all these other characters of kind of where their mind's at and what they want to do to where now that the, the turmoil and the situations that they're in they have they have something else to fight for to, right. to eventually want to reach that end you know to, to go to college or to get your own bar and kind of you know get the quiet life but then you have this giant you know guardian and all these other factors in the in the timeline to disrupt that and it just gives some good tension and, and things for your characters to fight for and uh, also find each other since everyone's spread out so it, it's 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 a very nice setup that we hope we read in Renegades 3. <laughs> note, note to Jeff, right? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, I'll write it. No, we're, we're adding it to the list. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, you strategically wrote it in a way to where he can't say no. You know? <laughs> There's too many loose oh, ends. They can say no, Chester. <laughs> <laughs> the Halo community will not allow it. I know where they are. Exactly. Um, Kelly, we're going to ask two more questions now, fun ones, and then we'll leave you go. So thank you very much for your time. Um, Ian wanted to ask him whether guy does our stuff on the, the the back end of the internet and the website. He says, "On Bastion, is there a copy of my house, but just better? Is that how it works?" <laughs> <laughs> there, there is your house. It's now a palace. Oh, and gold. Well, that's lovely. Wow, Ian. Well done, Ian. Wow. <laughs> now we just have to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, we have to find it. Me. Spark moved it. <laughs> Come on, Spark, uh, be a bro. I want to live in my palace house. <laughs> and getting, I know Oren is the uh, e-reader of the group here. Um, I say e-reader, sorry, I mean audio, because myself and Chris just read real books. We don't go over the fake books. Hey, I read this book. So I read this you book did, cover you did, to that's cover. True. That's true. Not um, many Halo books gotta, get that for me. <laughs> you got a great grab this time around. So obviously Tim Davido is does the audio for this book, and which makes absolute sense given what the book is about. That's super. You must have been over the moon with that. Did you have any involvement with that? How, how did that come about, getting getting Tim on board? I didn't have any involvement with it, and it was a total surprise. Um, I was like fell off my chair when he told me. Oh, wow. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a big surprise. Um, I think, you know, and I could be wrong on this, but, um, I think, I think it was, I think Jeff had maybe heard, um, one of those cameos online or, or something like that. Or when, um, when Steve Downs did that bit with Master Chief and it was so good. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I think that got them thinking, well, how cool would it be to, to have, um, one of the voice actors do an entire book, and um, and it and it just so happened that um, when they asked him asked him to do it, he was free, and um, so it fit fit perfectly right in everybody's schedule. Um, but yeah, how cool is that? That's so Very cool. cool. Well I need done. to get it. It'll be the only audio book I own, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, it was- it was the only audiobook I've ever listened to of my work. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't, like, I have trouble when my books come out, I don't read them again, and I don't, obviously don't listen to them. Because um, I just have a big internal editor, and, and I was like, oh man, I shouldn't say that, I shouldn't use that word. And so I don't, you know, I write them, they're done, and, and that's it. But this is the first time I've ever sat down and listened to one of my audio books. He was just amazing. And he was like so um 
you know, showed so much importance on getting the characters right and, um, and their, um, their like traits and little videos and stuff like that. And, Did Tim change his voice in any way from like Guilty Spark in the games to Guilty Spark in, in your book? Because of the Guilty Spark is a completely different character by the time we reach him in Point of Light. Yeah, so like when they start audio, the um, Simon and Schuster will send me like um, kind of like a, well, and 343 does too, send me a questionnaire of, of how things are pronounced and um, in kind of like an overall kind of sketch of, of the characters and things like that. And that was one of the things that um, that I had sent back was that Spark does sound similar to 343 Guilty Spark, but a little bit more, um, a little bit more matured and a little bit taking into account that, you know, he has been with the human crew for um, about a year. I guess year and a half, um, and so those will all influence how he talks, and of course he also remembers all the, his human past as well. So, um, so I think you know when I listened to it, I noticed that it was kind of like Greek with Guilty Spark, but a little bit more subdued, which I think is perfect. He's not screaming like calamity! You destroyed <laughs> the ring. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think he's a little bit more dialed back, whereas playing through like CE or, or Halo 3, 343 Guilty Sparks a little bit just more cheery and more just kind of like expression, expressionful. <laughs> See the <Yeah>. library. <laughs> yeah. Haha, ha, I am a yeah, genius I'm, sort of a thing. Yeah, my favorite quotes of, of him, oh, 343 Guilty Spark is, Link is the longer you look, the shinier I get. <laughs> I think he's like fabulous. Oh, such a fun character. I love Guilty Spark. <laughs> okay, so on that shiny, happy uh, note, I think we will wrap up. Kelly, thank you very much for your time. You've been wonderful once again. And congratulations on an amazing book. Can't wait for Halo yes. Renegades 3. It's going to be thank great. You. Thank you for having me on. I'm glad to be the second, the returning guest. Yeah. Returning yeah, champion. Returning. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did. I did do a quick search on our website, and I I couldn't find a second interview on some of our other ones. So I I think uh, David's right, um, but I mean, right, rightfully deserved. I I think uh, these these this trilogy of books or perhaps saga might be uh, my personal favorite. Uh, just from no, the you've already said Troy's books were better. Or no, <laughs> yeah, no, no I said, oh my word. <laughs> Look at my tweet that I sent. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Kelly, it ended, Kelly retweeted ended up it. in the it. Halo spotlight. It was very it did. impressive. It did. It was, but yeah, like this, this was truly a, a fun adventure to, to read and, uh, and just, you know, always excited for the next chapter and all of these stories. Um, and, uh, you know, then, then we can have you on for the third time. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> another two years from. <laughs> Well, set a set a reminder on your calendar for yeah, 2023. Yeah, we'll okay, we'll do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, guys, thank you all for joining us. Um, if you can find all of our past interviews and our special guests on our website, that's halopodcastevolve.com or halopodcast.com. Uh, you'll find everything else that we have for all our different shows on there as well. Uh, so once again, thank you to our incredible patrons. Thank you to uh, Kelly Gay. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Oren. And with that, I've been your host, David, and until next time, Evolved! 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 Evolved.